This is Monkey Puzzle, and I'm keeping it light today. I'm on scattered globules. I'm over here on the village globule. Over there is the swampule uh, that we conquered last time. I was uh, I filmed uh, myself on scattered globules. There's a spawnule and the mushroom and a little bit of the uh, the nether yule. <laughs> and there's some uh, redstone just past. That's the iron. I wanted to play around here a little bit. I already started. I uh, took one of the first village houses and made it into a little safe base for myself. Uh, just a little place I can hang out, go AFK without any problems. Um, started lighting it up a bit. It gets very mob ridden at night and the villagers have they, they've survived so far on their own but I decided to help them out. I was having great fun playing house uh, with my son on his on our server um, just really we started there I'll show you later but we started with like a village of just three houses and two villagers and and what fun it is just to make a bunch of uh, little houses of different styles and try to match them up but kind of just play with it and see how fast the villagers spawn and get a bunch of little villager babies running around <laughs> and, and then if you're good uh, pretty soon you get an iron golem and two and and maybe three um, you know so just uh, playing town here and helping them out I like to think of myself as uh, as the steward of the villagers rather than uh, using them to uh, make some kind of iron golem grinder and putting them all in some kind of concentration camp for villagers I want to make it nice for them they're very innocent beings <laughs> they need our help <laughs> plus if you have a thriving village uh, when trading comes in 1.3 you'll have lots more opportunities for trading so I just wanted to give you a little before shot uh, it's not quite before because I've changed this up a little bit and I uh, like I said I lit up um, but um, yeah I'm gonna fancy the town up a little bit that 32 block mob freezing thing is really a drag you can see that uh, these three guys right here are all frozen because I'm more than 32 blocks from them so if I want to uh, really uh, make them breed and expand their population I'm gonna have to hang out in the middle somewhere maybe up on top of the church tower over there or whatever that's gonna be um, and a couple other things before I get to it uh, I'm not gonna film it all because I'm just gonna be having fun derping around but I'll come back once I get some progress um, so yeah I just turned the first a uh, little house into this, just a real basic little survival place for myself. Over there between those two glowstone was a chest that Zisto left for us that had uh, some villagers spawn eggs in case I guess these guys got wiped out or in case you wanted to put villagers somewhere else where we might. Um, I put them a couple blocks down in the chest here surrounded by the cobble so that's a safe uh, capsule for the villagers so that uh, if nuclear disaster strikes on Minecraft or whatever uh, hopefully they'll be safe under there. Uh, one of the other things I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna make a real full-scale automatic wheat farm here or at least automatically harvesting that uh, with the uh, flip of one lever and one piston and one water source block um, the whole thing will get harvested and uh, this comes with these but these are very manual and kind of a drag so I'll take the, I'll, um, I'm not sure what I'll do with these maybe I'll just turn them into reed farms uh, that's probably the thing to do and and then harvest all the wheat and use that to start the wheat farm over here um, and the sun's going down but I think I got it pretty well lit over here and what that's gonna lead to is uh, a mushroom system over here. I mean, you do mushrooms instead of cows um, 
because they, uh, what am I trying to say? They offer more than cows. You know, you can milk them with a wooden bowl and get the mushroom stew. You can get mushrooms, and you can still get leather and and uh, steak. And if you shear the mushrooms off them, well, then they're a cow, and you can get milk. So, the most versatile giving mob, uh, passive mob in Minecraft, I believe. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do them. Plus, they're cool. <laughs> They're very cool, and steaks have the highest saturation of any food in Minecraft, so uh, they will feed us well with stacks of mushroom steaks. We shall never go hungry here, and in Minecraft, you don't have to eat your vegetables. <laughs> in fact, I don't think they offer many vegetables. So I have a couple ideas for a system for mushrooms. Uh, we'll get to that later, but that's the basics. Uh, wheat farm, uh, mushroom breeding system, and the big happy village uh, is going to go from something that was barely surviving to something that's thriving. And it's a few days later, and I've been futzing around with this in my spare time after work, and I think I've got it to something that's much more productive and a lot more fun and and uh, much better overall. Uh, we've got a fairly good-sized wheat farm in here, so never lack for wheat or bread at this point not that I'm eating a whole lot of bread at this point feeding it to the mushrooms I started a little uh, small little pen of them just to get them going used two mushroom spawner eggs and so far I've harvested maybe four stacks of steak pretty easily uh, I haven't got the rest of their products from them yet um, and the uh, village over there has got about 83 doors at this point uh, so I'll take you on a tour of that in the middle uh, first let's check out the wheat farm this is a design that I've come up with I haven't seen anybody do it uh, yet uh, just like this uh, it's not too different than your usual multi-level wheat farm uh, where the water comes from the top and comes down and knocks all the wheat off and harvests it at the bottom uh, but it's got a few uh, alterations that I think really uh, make it something different. Most of them that I've seen have a row of pistons that allow a solid square sheet of water to come over. Uh, this I came up with when I was in Spellbound Caves and I didn't have access to iron yet. So I didn't have buckets, I didn't have a piston. Um, so this is a design you can do without any iron at all from a single source block. I put mine up there to make a nice little spring waterfall feature here just because I think it looks cool. Uh, in this case I've got one piston that lowers this block right here and allows the water to divide into these two things but you can just as well make this a block of gravel or sand that you can just dig out and replace when it's done. Um, and if you didn't have buckets to uh, place source blocks along the edges like I did in this case you could just dig a channel down the middle and when it's not going um, to harvest the farm you could just have a hole that it goes down through here and goes down a channel in the middle and you could either leave the channel open or you could cover it with half slabs or blocks uh, so that it doesn't interfere actually you probably couldn't leave it open because then yeah, the, the water would go straight to it from here, boom, boom. So you got to cover it somehow, but in this case I didn't have to do that. So this wheat farm can be anything from your survival map wheat farm uh, when you don't have any resources to your uh, luxury wheat farm when you do. Uh, so it's getting to be nighttime. I'm going to turn it to day again and I'll meet you back here and finish up talking about the farm. Good morning, got my little Minecraft nap in there and now we've got a brand new day. Uh, a couple more things to talk about before I show you how you harvest this is it's currently planted in its fast growing configuration where uh, that's another great thing about having it be nine blocks wide um, besides the fact that this is as wide as you can get it uh, without uh, having to put a source block in the middle somewhere because um, besides that channel configuration that I talked about with the half slabs over it I don't know how to put just single source blocks in a field without it interfering with the flow of the water if it's an open hole 
the water will go straight there and stop. If you cover it with a single half slab, then you've got a disruption in the flow and you won't have water right after it. Uh, so anyway, in this shape, I'm able to put a source block there and a source block under this dirt block. And that's enough to uh, hydrate the whole thing. Um, but the other thing I was got diverted from talking about was this configuration. Nine blocks wide means you can have a row of wheat that each of them have uh, farmland on either side. And that's just how they coded the wheat growth in Minecraft. Uh, that's the way that it grows the fastest is if, uh, well, uh, let me see. Okay, let me explain. This is I first heard about this from Mr. Pixel Tech uh, in a video he did about wheat farm science, and then recently there's a video going around by Wubby where he talks about the um, how plants grow in Minecraft, and apparently the way they've they've coded wheat is that the well, let's do this. I'm gonna mess up my harvest a little bit, but uh, this is the fastest growing wheat it, when it has. Uh, hydrated farmland on every side. Uh, when you've got the um, you've got it in a row, um, you st it still gets points to grow faster from these ones around it. So basically every piece of hydrated farmland around it helps increase the rate of the growth. Um, but this one here, when you have them all in a row, this row will get uh, increased speed from this farmland being on the either side of it. Now, if you d plan it differently, like if you fill this whole thing up, basically the rate of growth is cut in half. Uh, so if we had seeds here and here, um, it would this whole thing would grow half as fast. And the if you take this little uh, three by three square here. Um, this will be decreased in half if either uh, th these two, either of these two are planted um, so that this becomes a cross or uh, I lost my wheat seeds <laughs> or any of these diagonals are planted. Uh, so the only way to not have single pieces of wheat uh, is to plant them in rows uh, and keep and not cut your speed in half. Um, so if you're in a hurry for wheat, this is the configuration to do it in. If you got more time, if you're totally caught up with your wheat harvest, you can plant the whole thing and it can take the time it needs to harvest. I also did it in this configuration for the demonstration because when this is all full, there's so much wheat that when you harvest it, it creates quite a bit of lag. Uh, and the, one of the last things to tell you is that this cobblestone is here because when the water flows over the edge, uh, when water flows directly down on top of items, it destroys them. So this is just to remind me not to plant there, keep me from being able to plant there, and not waste seeds on it. Uh, in 1.3, apparently, that's not going to be the case anymore, so this will be able to be tilled farmland then too, uh, which will be good because we'll be able to plant one more piece of wheat for each of these, and also this wheat in this configuration will then have more farmland around it which will help it grow faster because these ones on the edge are always the last ones to complete because they have less, a little less farmland around them to increase their speed. And the last thing I can tell you about this is I made it a little fancier this time. I've got a T flip-flop hidden down under there uh, to, which uh, sends a, the output sends a signal to this one piston so that I can trigger the wheat farm from here from this button or uh, let's get down here real quick or from this button right here or from a button all the way down there so and clicking the button again will turn it off so let's do it hopefully I don't have too much wheat this time and the first time I tried to film this and demonstrate it uh, got so much lag <laughs> it really was gonna mess up the quality of the video um, and also it turns out my mic was turned off that time, so I had to do it again. So, yeah, it's a little bit better this time. I'm staying at 30 frames per second. Uh, when I'm doing it myself, I don't care if it lags a bit when I'm doing this. It does take a minute for all the wheat to get down to the bottom. Uh, so while it's doing that, I'll show you this. I feel a little tiny bit of lag, but not too bad. 
Uh, this is just a cobblestone generator. I got the design from Cyberglitch. Uh, he did a video, something like a 10 second cobblestone generator. Uh, you just dig a little pattern in the ground, put uh, water source blocks there and there. Um, the way he had it uh, with this pattern was on both sides and two people could actually harvest it if you're a multiplayer from that side too. I turned it into a one player version. Um, put some obsidian here so that the uh, I wouldn't bust these blocks when I'm harvesting these. I'm using a cobblestone generator because uh, you know resources are definitely finite in scattered globules and while there's stone for me to access on a number of the globules I'd rather not tear them up just to get it and uh, yeah this makes uh, stone into a totally renewable resource uh, over there, I've got my uh, little method of harvesting trees, the oak trees in the big block. This one's just a smaller 3x3. Three three. Uh, also guarantees that I always get enough saplings back, uh, as when you get a bigger block, you get fewer saplings. Anyway, we've got all our wheat waiting for us right here. Wheat and seeds. Let's pick all those up. Uh, when I do a full harvest of this thing, you can see the water is turning off. I get, uh, last time I got four stacks plus one. And there's always some little villager kids jumping around on here. Oops, that's not my hoe. There's, uh, so in this one I got uh, two stacks plus 45. Uh, so I think, I'm trying to remember what I got. Was it four stacks plus one or five stacks plus one? Um, anyway, it does pretty good when it's fully loaded. Uh, so you can see this is only two harvests right here so I think two or I don't remember <laughs> anyway you get quite a bit of wheat from it uh, in this configuration it could go down infinitely too if you don't mind going down to very few frames per second when you harvest um, so yeah let me show you the village real quick uh, things I've done you saw that my little starter base um, made this nice tower here uh, and this glass catwalk that takes you all the way around town so you can go up there at night and see the um, iron golems doing their thing. This tower right here has 20 doors at the bottom which this is enough to uh, sponsor one iron golem. Apparently you can spawn an iron golem for every 20 or 21 doors that you have. Uh, something like that. Um, so yeah, the number of doors determines the number of iron golems to protect your villagers. So yeah, you got this little catwalk. We can check everything out. The tower gives a nice vista of most of the scattered globules up there, and got a water drops coming down. Uh, and this connects up with the top of the uh, former church over here, which is now a second little watchtower thing. Uh, got everybody milling around in the daytime, socializing, hanging out with their uh, security here. And yeah, so lots of the whimsical little structures. I've got uh, a couple things built into the side of the hill over here. I've been, uh, I've got a, let me take you over here. Uh, this one, let's just go down and check it out. This one houses, uh, I think, what they call a smurf. Uh, I forget what that stands for. I think it was static that uh, first showed it in the video. I'm not sure. But it's basically just a room that you can make completely dark. I just fill this with some dirt or sand. If I got fancy, I'd make a little piston door. Um, turn the lights off. And then you spam with bone meal in here. And all the flowers and uh, grass seeds uh, all pop off automatically because it's dark. And then you uh, can get lots of flowers and seeds. And uh, I've been putting flowers all over the place. I also got some, uh, use silk touch to get some grass over here so that the iron golems will have roses to pick. I'm asleep again and then we'll finish this tour off real quick. Okay. I'm sure taking a lot of naps in the course of this tour. Uh, that means it's been 10 minutes and I gotta finish up. So, yeah, this is uh, a little modernistic hobbit hole here. And I uh, 
changed all their existing wheat farms uh, into reed farms and got three different variations on it. Here's one uh, when you uh, chop the reeds down or the sugar cane, whichever they are at the time. And any blocks you miss when you're walking up and down will just come back down to the end right here. And then, let's see, let's go over here. Hello, hello, and you can see the whole bustling metropolis. If I could run, there we go. Uh, this one's got lily pads, so any, oops, didn't do that very well. Uh, any drops just get stay on top of the lily pads, so you don't have to go down in the water to get them. And the third design of retrofitting these is uh, this one where the water channels collect a little spot right down here. Now, of course, if you're devi you know, devising your own wheat farm from scratch, you could do it better, but that's just a couple ideas for how to retrofit the village wheat farms. And here's some more whimsical little structures here at the side of the hill. And just put lots of doors into everything. Um, yeah, so that's basically it so far. I uh, got quite a few villagers. I've lost count. There's always a bunch of uh, little guys wandering around. Uh, I've got two or three iron, iron golems cruising the place at this point. And yeah, I did actually end up. How you doing? How you like your village? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Getting good feedback from them. They always want to come up and talk to me about it. But yeah, I did a little filming uh, during the course of it, so I've made a little five minute montage for you of some of the more interesting scenes. Um, so I'm going to play that for you right now, hopefully you enjoy that, uh, and you can see a little bit of what I did in, while I was in progress, and uh, some of the goofier things that happened. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching, this is Monkey Puzzle, I'm going to sign out now, and I will have some more videos for you real soon, bye bye.